Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. A returning national registers St. Lucia's 23rd case of COVID-19. COVID-19 certified hotel properties welcome the safety net established protocols provide. And Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney is lauded for the economic recovery plans for St. Lucia. On Tuesday, July 14, 2020, St. Lucia recorded a positive case of COVID-19. The individual is a 27-year-old male, a returning national who arrived in St. Lucia on Friday, July 10, 2020. Upon arrival, he was tested and placed in institutional quarantine. Upon receipt of the results, the individual has been transferred to the respiratory hospital for isolation and related supportive care. He is currently doing well. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says the risk to people in quarantine and staff of the facility is low given the infection prevention and control guidelines in place at the quarantine site. Dr. Belmar George reminds that as St. Lucia moves to the fifth phase of the reopening of the economy, which is the highest risk to the population, it is anticipated that there will be the introduction of cases with both returning nationals and tourist arrivals. Therefore, we remind the public on the importance of the protocols as we continue to manage COVID-19. All sectors are encouraged to adhere to the public health protocols, which include the recommended physical distancing, regular hand washing with soap and water, and the proper use of the face mask or scarf. At this stage, practically all of the sectors have reopened and the public is reminded that mass crowd events are still closed. Nationals and visitors are asked to adhere to the protocols that have been put in place. This effort will play a significant part in minimizing the threat of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is working in collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism and has recently convened an emergency meeting to ensure the reinforcement of the protocols for guests at all approved COVID-19 certified accommodation. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has reiterated the importance of quarantine as a measure to minimize the risk of transmitting COVID-19. As it stands right now, the policy for passengers returning to St. Lucia outside of the Caribbean bubble is to undergo institutional quarantine. Some passengers may qualify for home quarantine based on certain requirements. Those who qualify for home quarantine include minors, those less than 18 years, families with young children, individuals with underlying medical conditions or disabilities, and those persons whose home meet the criteria for home quarantine. The public is asked to cooperate and encourage family members and friends who have returned from overseas and are presently in quarantine to remain at home for the 14-day duration. The names of all persons in home quarantine will be forwarded to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to support with the enforcement of compliance. The public is advised that they should alert the nearest police station or the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5349, 468-5342 or 468-5312 with information in relation to anyone who breaches home quarantine guidelines. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George. Two COVID-19 certified hotel properties have been sharing their experience as the island's tourism sector reopens. Anisia Antoine has the details. As St. Lucia officially opened its borders on July 6, 2020, hoteliers have put measures in place in following the established protocols to ensure that the health of locals and visitors alike remain a priority. General Manager of the Bay Gardens Hotel, Waltrude Patrick, explained that staff have undergone immense training to make certain that they are well prepared. The manager noted that currently 35 staff have resumed work. What we do now, the staff bus will pick up the guest, the sorry, the staff at the closest point to their home. When the okay. staff get on property, they do the, and I always tell them hand washing, 
is more effective than all the sanitizing. Indeed. So mm -hmm. there is a hand washing station. As they enter the property, you wash their hands, Wonderful. they do their temperature checks, then they go and clock in and they go in. When the staff are leaving after they've completed their, their, their day's work, they have a shower before they leave the property. Mm -hmm. And we now, we've us, we have brought in a team from 3 to 11 and 11 to 7 to wash, laundry, and iron the staff uniform. So they don't leave the property going back home with their uniforms. So the uniforms are washed on property. They take a shower before they leave. Mm -hmm. So when they come back the next day, they come in with the civilian clothes, but they go in and they have their uniforms already. The general manager detailed the preventative measures that have been implemented for visitors to minimize the risk of transmission of COVID-19. To start off, first of all, when the guests came in, because the vehicle would have already gone through the protocols from the airport, mm -hmm. and um, they came in, they did the sanitizing as they entered the property. From sanitizing, they went straight to the nursing station so they can have the temperature check done. Yeah. From temperature check, they proceeded to the counter to do the actual check-in. So in the past, we would print a red card, give the guests a pen, and again, because health, safety, and you know, keeping the six feet physical distancing, all that coming into play. So we now have contactless checking in procedures, meaning the guests would go, we have the monitor, the guests would do the checking in, and you know, after the check-in, then they go online, they go to the rooms, and we no longer, in the past we had a welcome pack. Mm -hmm. Everything now, you have Q4, you have scan me, and that is how you're gonna get the information. So for dining, for um, spa, anything you need no longer paper so the guest is the only one who's going to handle that key public relations manager at sandals resorts judy ditterville stated that the training and protocols put in place by the ministry of tourism have played an effective role in assisting the resort chain the COVID-19 certification has created an element of safety for both visitors and workers they're coming to a hotel that, that has been COVID certified that has and so they the understand that there'll yes. be a level of protocols, protocols in, place in place already so our job really is to maintain in the communication sure. to ensure they understand what can be done and what cannot be done to and keep all of us safe them as well as us yes. and, and and the country by extension as well okay so the training has been critical throughout the process the tourism representatives encouraged all individuals to continue to take the necessary precautions to prevent the potential spread of COVID-19 from the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. St. Lucia bid farewell to 30 of the Cuban healthcare workers who are here assisting with COVID-19 efforts. The practitioners have completed the medical mission to St. Lucia. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. A batch from the Cuban Medical Brigade on a mission to help St. Lucia fight the COVID-19 pandemic recently returned home to Cuba. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, commended the Cuban healthcare workers for the sterling contribution and service provided to the people of St. Lucia. So they are returning home. Um, they have served us in St. Lucia. They have served us extremely well. Our people were reporting how pleased they are to have had um, these nurses and doctors attend to them during their stay here in St. Lucia. I have already thanked them on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia. I have thanked them for the service that they gave to us so freely, so willingly and so lovingly. And um, we are here to say goodbye to them. Sadly, but it is a reality that, you know, all good things often come to an end. Cuban Ambassador to St. Lucia, His Excellency Alejandro Simancas Marin, emphasized the importance of the international cooperation between the two countries and expressed their commitment to continue providing medical support. An special moment for them because after three months of working together, uh, they are already part of the beautiful history of friendship, cooperation and solidarity between Cuba and St. Lucia. On behalf of the Cuban government, on behalf of the Cuban people, on behalf of the Cuban Medical Brigade, I would like to, to express our appreciation to the St. Lucian government, to the St. Lucian people, to the St. Lucian Ministry of uh, Health and Wellness, the Minister Mary Isaac, who uh, has been very kind to be here with us today. 
I would like to, to express our appreciation to all of them for the hospitality shown to the, the Cuban health specialists. A total of 29 nurses and one doctor of the Cuban Medical Brigade completed the medical mission and departed St. Lucia for Cuba. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And with the departure of the 30 Cuban medical workers, 83 remain on island, aiding in the COVID-19 fight. More in this report. The Cuban medical practitioners deployed here to assist with the COVID-19 fight are members of the Henry Reeve Brigade. The brigade specializes in medical assistance in cases of disaster or emergency. A total of 113 doctors, nurses, and biomedical engineers made up the first group that arrived in St. Lucia on March 27, 2020. They are among more than 1,000 healthcare workers that Cuba sent to 18 countries on three continents since the start of the deadly pandemic. The largest groups of Cuban medical workers were sent to Jamaica at 140, St. Lucia received the second largest at 113 and Barbados received 101. Smaller groups traveled across the Eastern Caribbean. St. Vincent and the Grenadines received 16 members, Antigua and Barbuda 29, Dominica 35, St. Kitts and Nevis 34, and Grenada 5. The health workers sent to Barbados and Grenada, mostly women, are nurses. Other countries received a combination of physicians, nurses, and technicians who are members of a Cuban international brigade that specializes in disaster situations and epidemics. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. On the hills of the unveiling of the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan for St. Lucia, Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, the Honorable Alan Chastney, has been lauded by Caribbean economist and advisor Mala Dukaran for the growth path outlined for the island as the region prepares to emerge from COVID-19. Caribbean economist and advisor Marla Dukaran spoke to the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, in a sit-down interview dubbed St. Lucia in a post-COVID world. The Prime Minister discussed the many measures implemented by St. Lucia in an effort to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. He explained that tough decisions had to be made as the country battled both health and economic crises simultaneously. It soon became clear that St. Lucia would not be able to achieve the estimated growth predicted for the island for 2020. Instead, government was now faced with the reality of having to borrow to keep the economy afloat. Honorable Chastney indicated that he was not fond of having to borrow to serve his debt, having recently attained a 59% debt-to-GDP ratio, a figure below the 60% benchmark set by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB. However, Caribbean economist Mala Dukaran had some insight to share. Whether or not you borrow a cent, your debt to GDP ratio is going to go up because the economy is contracting. So your numerator is getting smaller. But in your case, and in most countries' cases, the numerator is also getting bigger. Um, congratulations on achieving this, the 59% pre-COVID. And I know that the, e, the ECCU has this goal of everybody coming um, at or below 60% debt to GDP. I feel like you ought not to worry too much, Prime Minister, right now about debt to GDP because you really, it's really about keeping your your economy uh, um, stable and keeping people healthy and and in productive um, in, in in you know productive in some way. So I feel like now is not the time for us to have these traditional um, anxieties and uh, around debt to GDP. We could let that go for now. The Prime Minister also discussed revenue generating initiatives undertaken by the government, such as the Citizenship by Investment Program, CIP. Having been one of the last countries to commence the program, Honorable Chastney explained that the government did not want to compete on price, but instead was looking to differentiate the product. So we put in what we thought was the competitive price, sadly, which is $100,000. Um, and focused on the products and also said that we were going to have a very stringent due diligence program 
Uh, and I'm very proud of the fact that, that that's exactly what we achieved. So how do we differentiate the product is to go after high net worth individuals. So okay. one, um, offering the, hem, the headquarters. So a person now can get become a citizen in St. Lucia, open up a headquarters, um, and is uh, is both a citizen and shows that he has a business in St. Lucia. So it doesn't right. seem like he's just carrying a passport for a passport's sake. Um, the other one is that we're in the process of creating a residency program. So that fact a person can either purchase real estate in St. Lucia through the CIP right. program um, and now um, uh, pay taxes of about $35,000 a year. So again, now a person can say, I have a residence in St. Lucia, I have a business in St. Lucia, I pay personal income taxes in St. Lucia. So it gives them the substance when they're going around the world. So St. Lucia is not going into the volume game. Um, what we're going into is quality. Um, right. And trying to go after individuals of high net worth and that they're going to bring their friends here. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to providing aid to all those negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and the continued development of St. Lucia. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novel Aquayol. Monsieur Tangenel, Monsieur Madame Department qui responsabilité pour information à gouvernement de l'ici GIS et télévision nationale PIA NTN, Capositou Nouvelle à Creole, Capositou Primus Hutchinson. Yon gagne travail santé hot pays Cuba qui était en cette ici pour te assister et puis service santé à bataille contre maladie corona vivre en pays au semaine ça là. Ministre Santé, on a Mary Isaac, félicité ce nos et qui ont docteur qui fait trois mois qu'a pour tuer service yo sans récompenses pour citoyen cette ici. Ministre Isaac, vous remercie ce travail Santé Cuba pour grand contribution yo et service pour gérer cette ici. Madame Isaac dit que Pepe a parlé de manière ce nos et docteur traité yo c'est tellement gentil de mon temps yo te ka performer ce service ça là. Ministre Santé a Di tu apresiab e kawi mesye yo a fonche a su kot ni pep set si e kosi gwed ma pe ya. Ambasade de Cuba, Alejandro Simon Kasmare, wan fose e portas korporasyo etanasyonal an de pe ya e kosi bay komitman ki Cuba kai kontune pou asiste set le si e pi servis sati. Si la ambasade mare, se yon mouman spesyal paski apwe 3 mwa ka travay ansam Ce travail a déjà mafrisé en l'histoire des bons amis, coopération et solidarité entre Cuba et cette ci Ambassadeur Cuba remercie Pep cette et le ministère de Santé, et le ministre de Santé, ça c'est Mary Isaac, pour l'amitié et l'honnêteté. Il a ajouté que Cuba a toujours apprécié des goûts traitements pour ces pour cette ci pour ces spécialistes de santé de Cuba, en total de 29 noces. Et yo docteur hot Cuba te asit lisi fini complètement mission yo et j'ai quitté pour retourner en pays yo à Cuba. Ministère de l'éducation a annoncé résultat l'examination common entrance pour l'année ici. En ces étudiants qui écrit l'examination yon mil et cinquante d c'était garçon et yon mil yon cent trente d c'était fille. Cinquante d en ces étudiants ça là recevait accommodation pour te assister yo durant l'examination pendant 15 à 6 candidats parti présent l'examination comme un entrance l'année ici c'était par multiple choice seulement ça veut dire 
d'examen a te ka ba yo choix pour choisir yon a plusieurs réponses à sous ces papiers Marie Corona te forcé ministère de l'éducation pour prendre yon décision pour réduire à sou yon bon de toi en c'est ça qui te ka exister à l'examination ça là avant alors ces candidats pour moins temps à ces chambres d'examination pour l'examination l'année ça là c'est point qui les candidats trouvé c'était en degré entre 17.22% pour 88.22%. Pour 1,192 candidats enregistrés en même un ben plus haut point national pendant 981 enregistrés plus bas point national. 2,163 candidats trouvé place en 22 l'école secondaire. Le chanteur Kaiso Exoka, a parmi l'autre les artistes musiciens en pays, a appelé des forces là qui malade de corona fessé à ce yo, de voyons à ce yo, de voyons tant cela, de voyons discussion à ce programme entier, yo fait ça public, wa Kalifso 2020, à cette le si Dennis Tikaro Leo et Lennon Blaze Prosper, qui a représenté une organisation nouveau qui a porté nom Balance Inc. Yo de a te parlé de manière organisation à chercher façon pour établir un environnement pour supporter les artistes. Selon Blaise, maladie corona chavire tout plan et arrangement qui yo déjà ni en place pour carnaval et calypso l'année ça là. Mais plus de ça, il place ces artistes là à dans une position côté yo pas fait c'est l'argent et tu ca faire encore et que j'ai juste perdu profit. Parce que nous pas ni monde pour venir à ce spectacle là encore, mm -hmm. nous pas ni um, monde pour payer pour ce spectacle là encore. Mm -hmm. euh, ça nous pour faire présenter à les um, social media. Et bien ça nous va créer virtuel. Mm -hmm. Bon, ça même, on pour payer pour ça. Mm -hmm. Tout ça ni, tout, tout ça ni, um, ça va créer um, cost. Mm -hmm. Tout ça ni dépense. Oui. Dépense, tout ça ni dépense. Mm -hmm. Bon. Un chat, un chat, c'est mon nom qui qui te correspond ça avant. Il a pas allé faire ça encore. Eh ben, il a pas ni pour faire ça encore. Mm -hmm. Donc so, nous avons nous avons des mons qui ça pour venir aider nous faire un bagay. Parce que nous avons nous avons plané un million de activités mm -hmm. pour nous pour nous voir si nous ça fait ces artistes là. Rien mm -hmm. anti bagay pour nous ça mettez vie en poche pour nous mm -hmm. ça commencer dépenser mm -hmm. encore. Blaise aussi parler de un spectacle spécial qui est organisé pour moi à ou. Le spectacle est virtuel. Il est fait à sur Internet, à sur TV. Mais je vais nous présenter là. Nous avons fait live. De l'Or Cultural Center. Nous avons invité. Nous avons pour inviter. Ça qui nous paye. Qui nous paye premium pour venir. Parce que nous ne passons pas à l'idée. Nous passons à l'idée. Nous avons des gens qui veulent venir à ce spectacle là. MC a créé d'or. Live pour en bas. La créé de bas pour les gens. Vous avez mm -hmm. um, un protocole là qui est en place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, si vous ne pouvez venir à un spectacle ça là, vous mm -hmm. ne pouvez um, pas payer premium mm -hmm. pour venir là. Mm -hmm. Mais vous avez été là quand vous avez été là, vous avez regardé sur les social media, vous avez regardé sur la télévision. Mm -hmm. Et ça nous a demandé si nous avons un t-shirt qu'avant pour aider le spectacle là, vous avez un t-shirt. Yeah, si vous avez un CD qu'avant, vous avez un CD. Mm -hmm. Si vous avez un DVD qu'avant, vous avez un DVD. Vous avez aidé le spectacle là. Si vous avez un GoFundMe, Allez et go fund me. Et nous allons faire ce que nous allons faire, c'est um, mettre un uh, compte à la banque pour mm -hmm. aller là mm -hmm. et déposer un petit avis d'ici à ces artistes pour assister. Oui. Et c'est comme ça que nous entrons pour une nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous allez poser une autre nouvelle en créole. Après ça, vous allez poser une autre nouvelle. Merci à Pearl Primus. The St. Ira Seaman Secondary School wishes to inform parents and guardians that the registration packages for new Form 1 students should be collected on Friday, 17th July 2020 from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the school. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.